All right, I'm glad you're here because today we have an interesting Wireshark capture. Now I've, I've grabbed this from an excellent online resource. If you'd like to have the exact same Wireshark capture, go to the description of the video and I'll put a URL to where you can download that. Go ahead, grab that if you want. Today we're gonna be going through and we're gonna be pretending that we, we have no idea what's happening inside this. That we have in fact a real life incident that's happened. And so we need to actually figure out who it is that is compromised and what is the incident that is in fact happening. We're gonna go through some of the steps that I do when I'm doing an, a Wireshark analysis, try to get a, a grasp of what's going on. So the first thing we do, whenever we have a capture like this, we we don't zero in and start throwing filters at, at our analysis. We have to take a look at the entire thing as a as a whole and then start chopping it down to the point where we've we've isolated key pieces of information that we can use as part of our reporting process. First thing I always do is I like to look at how many packets I'm dealing with. So in this case, we're dealing with 896. Uh, not, a, not a ton, which is fine. I also like to grab hold of the, the bar here and slide on down to see what is the majority of the captures that we have. So in this case, we can actually see that FTP is, there's a ton of FTP data that's being sent across. So that's actually clued what the, the incident actually is. Doing a process like this gives us sort of an idea of what you want to figure out. Why don't we do a couple of two things? You can start with one process or another, either looking at the protocols that are being used, or you can zero in and figure out like who are all of the characters in this story. So figure out all of the internal IP addresses. Now, I'm gonna start with protocol first because you're not always gonna have a capture that is only is like 900 packets. You might have one that's hundreds of thousands of cap packets and the IP list is gonna be absolutely massive. So let's first go and look at the protocol hierarchy. So we go to statistics and we go on down to protocol hierarchy and we look at our window here and we can tell right away that yes, in fact, we have a tremendous amount of FTP data that's being sent from this network into this network. We're not totally sure that part just yet, but we can get an idea if we use another statistics window. So let's go ahead and open up another statistics window here. And I always like using endpoints. It gives us a really good idea of what's going on. Let's bring that one in. And we can have a look at these at both at the exact same time. So IPv4, Right now we've only got two internal assets. So we've got the 10, 9, 17, 1, which in this case, we're gonna make an assumption that it will be the router because we usually have the router as the first host address or the last host address. In this case, we're dealing with a 17.101. That, that is one of interest. I'd like to zero in on that. And then we've got a few IP addresses that are external. So we, we know that those are external because they don't have that private network spacing you know, like 192 or starting with a 10 or a 172. These are definitely outside of that range. So what do we do from do from here? I mean, I would like to know what the, the internal machines are doing. We can do that right from this window. So let's right click on our, our machine that we would like to dig in deeper. So I want to know about that 101 aspect. So uh, apply as filter selected and behind the scenes here we've got the filter is applied perfect and now we have the relationship of 17.101 and how it's relating to other 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 machines whether that's external like we can see right here or we've got an internal relationship so 101 to the dot one if we look at the number of packets we're looking at everything right now what that tells us is that every single thing inside of this capture is involving the 101 so this is a this is where we should be we should be digging i really like another area of the statistics window it helps me gather an idea of like who's talking to who and so we go to statistics and drop on down to conversations and let's look at the ipv4 conversation here now we've got 17101 right over here, which is great. And then who is this machine talking to? We got the router, only eight packets, 152, yeah, 220, 41. And then we got a, a huge jump from the next highest one is 52 to 774. Now remember our, our packet capture is 
totaling at 896. So this is the, the majority of our capture. So if you're looking at the screen, you can see some sensitive information that's already passed. I can see that the three-way handshake over here is SIN, SIN, ACK, ACK. A three-way handshake has been established with the server of 216. So that's external. I think it said Switzerland, but that doesn't really matter. And then after that, we've got data transfer. So immediately after that three-way handshake, we start transferring data back and forth. And so in this case, we can see under packet 114 that the server sent a response back to our internal client of 101 and says, welcome peer FTPD. At this point, we don't really know exactly what's going on and that's okay because now we have to look at more, more information and it all sort of like plays out beautifully for us as well. So we have a user that is being authenticated or trying to, the user goes in, boom, password required, comes back to the client and then the client actually puts in their password and because it's not FTPS or SFTP, we can actually see this password in clear text and it's right there. Boom, bing, bang, boom. We are authenticated. The user does a, sends a command. So a present working directory. And we were, we're gathering that in this case, under this packet here, the FTP server is actually telling the client where they are in the directory of the server hosting this FTP server. So remember the FTP server is on the external network. It's not internal. This is all of the internal machine 101 talking to outside. Let's keep going in its in itself. Folks connecting to an FTP server outside of your network isn't a bad thing. There's not if you're allowed to do that. Okay, if you're if there's proper security controls, managing that then we're we're in a good place. It comes the problem is when you're not allowed to do that and somehow you're still able to do that where this could be a really bad thing. In a bit, we're gonna learn how this, this is a bad thing, but not because they logged in, but because of what is actually being sent across this network. I mean, I mean, it says it's, it's, it looks like a very interesting one. I mean, I saw, I see passwords in the network traffic. I go, all right, let, let, let's dig in. What's, what's happening here? And Wireshark has this really cool feature. And for those who have played around with Wireshark a lot, you already know this, but I wanna show you something cool. And that is if I go file and I want to export objects, I can actually go and to FTP data, which is what's being transferred here. Open that up and beautiful. Look at, there's the passwords file that I, I'm interested in. Let's go and, and there's another file here. I might as well get them both. I mean, it's, they seem pretty, pretty interesting to me. We're going to save it all and let's go and open that file. Let's take a look at what's going on. What do we, what do we have inside of here? Uh, actually pretty interesting things. We've got a email, we've got a password here. We'll scroll down a little bit and we've got more uh, user credentials and passwords. I mean, that's a good password, but now we know that something has happened. Like we're sending password information across the internet to a server somewhere in the world and it's being stored there. Not such a great thing. Let's open up the other file. This one's a lot bigger. Let's grab a hold of this and go all the way to the bottom. We're still scrolling. We've got upwards of 18,000 lines. Okay, that's a, <laughs> that's, that's a single file that we've grabbed out of this capture and there's 18,000 plus lines in it. What does all of this information mean to me right now? It means it means nothing. <laughs> I've got a VIP recovery. I don't know what that means really at this point. We've just got some evidence. So now we have to figure out the behavior. What is it that has been in here? Like what, what's going on? What's this? What's the story here? And it's actually going to be revealed very, very quickly. Let's scroll down and go on over here. So remember that file that was 18,000 over here, we can see that it's actually being stored on the server. In this case, the relationship that we're seeing here is that a client machine is putting something in an FTP server. It's important. And let's observe that the name here doesn't change. Look, it, it, it doesn't change. So what's happening is that a single file is being continually updated and it's happening at a known 
byte size. Look, it's 1460 bytes. Let's we keep going down. Does it change? 1460, no. 1460, bup, 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 bup. So those 18,000 lines are coming from this machine and going to this server on the internet. We also can tell something right away. So like the answer to what's happening here, right here on the screen right now, it might not look like much, but that's why I love Wireshark because it's like, once you start understanding, you're like, ah, right, okay, I get it. What's happening is data exfiltration. And the story goes like this. We've got an internal machine. We can see the evidence right here on a dedicated port to whatever that relationship is, uh, 49773, we can see it's right there, it doesn't change, is communicating to a server, FTP server, on the internet, on a dedicated port there, 62759, and it's sending continually a specific file, or rather a file that's continually being updated. Bup, 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 bup. And we saw previously that passwords were being sent. That's confidential information. These cookies, that's confidential information. So what kind of incident is happening? We have data exfiltration through a key, key logger. Now you might be like, no, Andrew, where is the evidence that we're dealing with a key logger? So now if we think about what we know about key loggers is that when we send data through our keyboard or some other piece of information, involving our computers, it's it's grabbing that data right there. It's fast and it's either saving it locally or in this case, shipping it across the internet to an FTP server. The evidence of this in this network behavior is over here in our Delta. Look at, we've got uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, bop, 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 bop. And if we keep going down, bop, 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 it, it, it's really, really fast. Like this is, this is so insanely fast that, that it's, it, it can only be something that is intentionally happening and being managed by a piece of software on the client side. This is the part that's the smoking gun here that a key logger is actually being used to ship data across and at a really rapid speed updating a file on on the server. So what should we do at this point? We need to isolate this machine for sure. In this particular capture, we sort of come to a conclusion that either an internal asset, a person has run a piece of software that is grabbing data, or this machine here has in fact a piece of malware that is running and doing a keylogger and stealing the data. I'm more along the lines that there's a piece of malware that has run and it just happens to have that part of that malware is contains uh, credentials to log into a server on the other side of the planet. We should take this machine, isolate it from the network, cut it off so it can't talk to anybody anymore. Do some analysis on like what's going on. Who was the last person to use this? Look at, look at more network traffic. I hope you enjoyed this video. I really, really like doing Wireshark. I like doing Wireshark videos. Uh, looking at network traffic is super fun. And hey, if you're enjoying this stuff, there's a couple other videos on the screen that I think you're going to enjoy, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye!